It is 2019 and the PlayStation VR is in its third year already. Now, you might be watching this video because you're considering to buy one, but you're not so sure. Is it probably better to wait for the upcoming headsets like the Oculus Quest or the Vive Cosmos? And is it still worth it in early 2019 to buy a PlayStation VR? Now, in this video, I'm going to answer this question and it's coming up. Hi and welcome to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and if this is your first time here and if you're just as excited about VR and as me, then subscribe now and click the bell button so don't miss anything. So finally, you're also considering to get into virtual reality. You've seen all these people play Beat Saber and Skyrim and now you think, okay, let's do this. And you're wondering, is the PlayStation VR still worth it? in 2019. Before I answer you this question, let me simply introduce myself if you don't know me yet. My name is Sebastian Ang and well, I am a VR expert, you could say, because well, I have all the headsets that are currently on the market and I'm one of the few people who have even tried those next generation headsets like the Stavia One, the, the Pimax headsets and the Xtel. So I can certainly give you, uh, well, a very educated answer to this question and therefore let's directly get into it. Is the PlayStation VR still worth it in early 2019 with all the new headsets coming up? So my answer is a very, very clear yes. Even though there's so many other headsets on the market and there are new headsets coming, still the PlayStation VR is the headset that I'm still recommending to most people and the reasons I'm going to talk about them now. So first of all, I'm going to compare the PSVR with all the VR headsets that are currently on the market now in early 2019 that the Vive Cosmos and the Oculus Quest are still not on the market. And then in the end, I'm also going to let you know why the PSVR is still worth it to get now, even though these new headsets, well, are coming up quite soon and how this will likely compare to those. But first, let's compare this to the ones that are currently on the market. So first, let's talk about the display of the PSVR. So as compared to Rift and Vive, this here has the lowest resolution, but still, actually, it kind of looks even better than Vive and Rift, even though the resolution is a bit lower than the resolution of Vive and Rift. And the reason is, that this headset is using a so-called RGB stripe matrix. So each and every pixel is being represented by three subpixels. And by Rift, Vive, Vive Pro, that is not the case. They are using a different kind of technology to show the pixels. And for, these, for this technology, they're only using two subpixels. So in the end, actually, this has more subpixels than Rift and Vive. And therefore, actually, this headset has less screen door effect than most of the other headsets that are on the market right now. So the screen door effect is the effect that you kind of see um, the black area between the pixels. But with the Sony PlayStation, actually, you don't see that. And that's why the visuals still in 2019 look very clean and very nice. So display is definitely a good point. Then also the lenses. The PlayStation VR is not using Fresnel lenses like Rift, Vive, Vive Pro, Samsung Odyssey and most of the other headsets. Now Fresnel lenses, they have these concentric rings and because they have these concentric rings, you will see God rays in high contrast scenes. Now what are God rays? God rays are those glare that is kind of distracting in, the, in those high contrast scenes and because the PlayStation VR is not using this kind of Fresnel lenses, you don't have this problem at all for the PlayStation VR. So as what the optics are concerned, it really looks nice still in 2019 because you have this RGB stripe matrix and you have these great lenses. Now let's talk about comfort. And well, this is also another very strong suit of the PlayStation VR. Still in 2019, this device is king of comfort. It was the first headset that introduced this kind of halo style design where the, the weight actually rests on your forehead 
and well it makes for a very balanced feeling and you can wear this for hours and i certainly wore this for hours without feeling uncomfortable so still in 2019 a super comfortable device and you'll be able to play hours upon hours without feeling bad or feeling like uncomfortable with this device so comfort still amazing on the psvr now let's talk about games, probably the most important factor for lots of you because you want to play Skyrim, you want to play Beat Saber and so on and so forth. And also here, the PlayStation VR has an amazing catalog. You can play all these games, Skyrim, Beat Saber, all the big games are on PlayStation VR. And because the PlayStation VR has the biggest install base of all the current VR headsets, developers want to bring the games onto the PlayStation VR. So if a game developer is, is releasing a new game, most probably you will find it on PlayStation VR first because, well, they of course want to earn money. So we have an amazing catalog of games on the PlayStation VR and we also have an amazing games of exclusive games that you will only find on the PlayStation VR. Like for example, Resident Evil 7, horror game that I personally don't really play because I'm not a big fan of horror games, but also like my favorite VR game of all times, Astrobot. You can only find it on the PlayStation VR and that is just such a big point, such an amazing advantage of the PlayStation VR all the great games are there and amazing exclusive that you won't find on any other consoles. So yes, game selection still amazing in 2019 and this is not going to stop. Another great selling point is this accessory here. This is the PSVR aim controller and it's a rifle controller which will make the first person shooter games that support this device super immersive and i can tell you i love this game together with farpoint this is still one of my favorite virtual reality experiences and actually you don't have something like this a first party rifle controller on any of the other headsets you don't have this for the oculus rift you don't have that for the vive the vive pro and you also don't have this for the Windows Mixed Reality headsets. And in my opinion, this is a very big oversight because this here, having this supported by games directly, feeling the rumble, it is an amazing accessory and will make your first person shooter gaming experiences even better in virtual reality. So that in my opinion is still also a very, very big plus. And in my opinion, still another great selling point in 2019 is that you do not need a gaming PC. You only need your PlayStation 4 or the PlayStation 4 Pro. Me, for example, I only have a PlayStation 4. I don't even have the Pro and I still enjoy this a lot. So you don't have to buy an expensive gaming PC. Instead, just get a used PS4, for example, for $200 or what. And uh, yeah, get the PlayStation VR on top. And as what the pricing is concerned, for the PlayStation VR, it is still very, very reasonably priced. You can get amazing bundles with the best games. Like, for example, there is the, the Astrobots and Moss bundle. Two of my favorite games. You can get it for $266 from Amazon. Link is in the description below. And for example, you could get like the Beat Saber bundle with two controllers and um, also another game. Let me just check it, which is... I just looked it up, Beat Saber and Borderlands Bundle, which you can get for $345, including everything that you need and even the, the two controllers. So it's a very, very great price, very reasonably pr priced for an amazing VR system that you're going to have lots of, lots of fun with. But let me also, now that I've told you about all the great things about the system. Let me also tell you about the parts that are not optimal. So the PSVR move controllers, those hand controllers, they are certainly okay, but they are not as good as the controllers like the Oculus Touch, for example. So they are okay-ish. Let's say it like this. You can use them and it's okay, but they are not as good as the competition. Then also the tracking is also good, but it is not really like 360 degrees. It's more like front facing tracking. So you have to keep your face, keep faced to the, 
to the camera, to the PlayStation VR camera, and it's not like that you could play in all directions that you could do it with the other headsets. However, I talked to lots of PSVR fans and they are totally used to that. And I believe that is completely fine. But of course, that is up to you. But I simply wanted to also mention these, these negative points. So now that I've told you why I can still recommend the PlayStation VR 2019 as compared to the headsets that are currently available on the market, I would also like to address the questions about, hey, should I probably wait for the Oculus Quest, which is going to be like $399, you don't even need a PlayStation 4, and it's completely wireless, or should I wait for the Vive Cosmos, which also looks very interesting. So let's talk about this topic. I am quite sure that both the Vive Cosmos and the Oculus Quest are going to be amazing headsets, no question about it. However, for the Oculus Quest, you have to keep in mind that it is being operated by battery. So this battery is going to run out probably after, I don't, we don't know yet, who knows, per, probably two hours, and then it has to go back to charge. With a PlayStation VR, you can play for hours. You, you don't have to worry about battery at all. You can play five, six hours. You can totally immerse yourself into the virtual worlds. Now also, the Oculus Quest is a mobile device. So this is not being powered by uh, a graphics card or by a PlayStation 4, no. This is being powered by a mobile chipset. A mobile chipset that is also being found in, in phones. And that's why you will probably not see your big um, blockbuster games like Skyrim on the Oculus Quest. There will be some games which which don't need so much resources, like perhaps Beat Saber and so on and so forth, and there will be nice games. However, if you are into these big games, Borderlands, Skyrim, and so on and so forth, then the PlayStation VR is still your safest bet. And um, yeah, if you if you want to play these games, then go for the PlayStation VR now. It is not expensive and it is an amazing system. Also, for the Oculus Quest, I think it's amazing that it's actually um, yeah, wireless. That, that is good and you can bring it anywhere you want. But let's be honest, how often are you really going to bring it outside? How often are you really going to make use of this portability? So, well, I have the Oculus Go and I thought like, amazing, I'm going to bring it to all the places right now, but where do I use my Oculus Go? At home, most of the time. So, while I certainly think that the Oculus Quest is going to be awesome, I don't think that you, have, that you need to wait for it. If you want to get into VR, you can do so right now with the PlayStation VR and I'm sure you're going to have an amazing time with it. Now, as what the Vive Cosmos is concerned, well, for the Vive Cosmos, you will still need to tether it to your gaming PC in order to play games. And well, if you don't have a gaming PC, then yeah, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> you first need a gaming PC in order to run it. So definitely, I think you, you cannot do anything wrong with the PlayStation VR, even now in 2019, and therefore, it is still my big recommendation. And is it worth it to get the PlayStation VR in 2019? A big yes. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that it, that it was helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV yet, do so now. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.